sand ocean and over 9,000 horsepower. Add in a bit of adrenaline, mix it all up, and what do you get? The Aquacross Pro Tour. The stunning white sands of Sarasota are home to round three of the Aquacross Pro Enduro Series. This year's racing is more competitive than ever. And last time out in St. Pete Beach, we had three different race winners, and not one of them was called McCluggage. Chris McCluggage has won the last four weekends dating all the way back to Lake Worth, Florida in 2016. And last week he won without taking a win. Even though he didn't win a race all weekend, St. Pete Beach still turned out great for Mr. Mac Attack. First, he picked up the world ranking number one jersey. Then three super consistent second place finishes later, he brought home the overall honors, leaving the table looking like this. Mike Klippenstein in sixth, St. Pete race winner, Frenchman Nicholas Rias in fifth. Erminio Iantosca in fourth, the only Sea-Doo man on the leaderboard. Another race winner in St. Pete, Brian Baldwin in third. Eric Francis second, the third of the St. Pete winners. And on top of the table with a 34 point lead, Chris McLuggage. Would you expect him to be anywhere else? Chris, can you tell me a little bit what happened in St. Pete when you slowed down twice? I got caught up in some lap traffic a couple times. Out of every race I've been to, that was more like on the ragged edge, where it's like at any point you could just fly off the ski. So that's why I think all of us were just pushing it so hard. And for me being sick, I was like a little bit scared. So I just was sitting down a lot more than normal. And uh, I just, I think when I got to the lappers, I was tired. And what I would normally do is just charge right through them. But this time, uh, I think because I was scared of getting thrown off, I slowed up too much. And, um, you know, they ended up uh, passing me. Now, you mentioned the three different race winners. Is Aquacross getting more competitive this year? I think it is getting more competitive. If I called myself the best, I would call Brian Baldwin the second best. You know, and if I'm not out there, Brian's. But you know who's a real surprise? And uh, that being on a sea do is Arminio Iantosca. I know he's in great shape right now. And I'm really proud of him because I, he, his dad kind of got me into jet skiing, but then I got him into jet ski racing. I really think he deserves to go out there and uh, be, you know, in the top three. Some of the other guys, eh, you know, they, they don't have as good of attitude, but, um, you know, they all work hard and, uh, you know, we all put in our time and, uh, you know, it's, it's anybody's really race out there to win. I just love the rough water because I know that's where I can really shine. Eric Francis wasn't the only race winner in the family in St. Pete. His English wife, Sophie, took the win in race one in the amateurs, becoming the first female ever 300 class winner. Let's go, ladies. Sophie, first of all, congratulations. How did it feel to cross the finish line first in St. Pete? It was amazing, just the feeling going through the finish line and just knowing that I was the first one to finish, it was just incredible. All my hard work paid off. And Eric, how did that make you feel? I made, made me proud, but you know, I gotta say I'm not surprised. I knew it was coming, I'm just glad she did it so early. Eric, you've got a big weekend coming up yourself. What are your plans for Sarasota? I get a good start and uh, set a fast pace because with this heat, you know, as we saw in St. Pete, a lot of riders were struggling and dropping out. So we're going to try to do the same thing and just see if we can make people just give up. Now, do you think Mac has a weakness? I mean, it definitely showed that he was having a hard time with the pace at St. Pete. Maybe it was the boat, maybe it was health. We're going to try to exploit that this weekend and push as hard as we can and, you know, take, take a win for the weekend. Team Francis will be on the gas this weekend. And congratulations, Sophie, a winner in the bikini contest. One man who's ready to go into the Sarasota weekend after renewed confidence from the big win in St. Pete 
is Brian Baldwin. And that'll do it. Race number one belongs to the tweaker, Brian Baldwin. You know, I got a great start and, and just kept on my game and, you know, won the moto. Now, we saw something we haven't seen before. Does McCluggish have a weakness? Um, you know, they say racing is like 80% uh, mental. And uh, I think that's one place that I've always been really good. Like, I don't really get rattled. I mean, I get tired, but I don't get rattled. So, um, you know, I, I think he gets rattled. Speaking of being mentally strong, are you ready to go into the weekend? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, we had a really good weekend last weekend and ended up third, um, tied for second. So I, you know, I really want to pull out a win this weekend. Can you win the whole thing? I believe so. So any of those guys could take the weekend. But Mikey, who else should we be watching out for? Well, watch out for Team Seedus or Medio Ion Tosca. He's been coming on strong lately. Also, Denmark's Marcus Jorgensen and the hometown boy, the outlaw, Eric Legopoulos. And do you still have a favorite? I got to go with McCluggage. He's four for four the last four events. So Mikey is heading out to his commentary position on Lido Beach, and the world's fastest jet ski riders are getting ready for race one. After the break, it's race time. Welcome back. The skis are heading on their run out to the course, so it's the perfect time to take a look at why we're all here. The Sarasota Grand Prix weekend is something special with huge crowds, a block party, and a boat parade. But here's the really cool thing. It's all for charity and one charity in particular, the Suncoast Children's Charities. What a great cause. Well, Suncoast Charities for Children every year from proceeds raised from this race provides a grant to the Suncoast Foundation, and that in turn helps support five area nonprofits here in the Sarasota community, serving over 8,000 clients with special needs. And over to Mikey. Here we go as the riders are starting to be staged for race number one here in Sarasota. Taking a look at Troy Snyder through the GoPro footage being put down by Chris McCluggage. Take a look at our course real quick. It's going to be a two-mile course. We've got uh, seven buoys out there. You'll see they'll start from the far south. They'll work their way north and come through. And the finish line is right out in front here of the Lido Beach Resort. Going on board right now with Eric Francis. Francis currently sitting second in the points, just behind Chris McCluggage and just in front of Brian Baldwin. Wind speed out here today, about six mile per hour. Winds out of the west. As again, riders being staged at the far south end of the track as we view it here from the beautiful Lido Beach Resort. And here we go with the race start. The green flag is up in the air. Once it drops, we'll be on our way. 25 minutes plus a lap and Eric Francis getting a great jump as we take a look and you can see the conditions out there pretty rough for a lot of these riders 24 riders here in this class all of them going about 80 mile per hour toward one buoy and guess what folks no brakes that's right a good start by chris mcluggage your points leader and again flanked to his right is eric francis so again great footage being uh, put down here by Greenlight tv and our drone as we take a look out, Chris Saxon, one of the rookies out there on the number 71 Yamaha. He comes to us from Orange Beach, Alabama. And you can see it's nothing but jet spray as they head in to turn number one. The Geico boat, the yellow boat there you see, boat number 77. That is Jason Russo, a local product from right here in Sarasota, Florida. Saxon is on the move, but he's got his homework cut out for him because he's got Chris McCluggage, Eric Francis, Arminio Iantosca also up there in the mix. So, again, taking a look out here in lap number one, it looks like McCluggage out in front with Iantosca in second, Baldwin in third, Francis in fourth. As we take a look through the lens of Chris McCluggage right now, and you can see nothing but clean water for the Mac attack. Chris McCluggage again riding for Monster Energy and Broward Motorsports. And Dean Cherrier spending the wrenches for that boat right there. Back on board with Chris Saxon. Chris currently sitting sixth in the points overall. And again, not too bad for his rookie season. Arminio Iantosca sits in second place. Arminio out of Naples, Florida. 
as is his compadre, Chris McCluggage. Actually, Chris and Herminio grew up together in the same parking lot. Chris's dad owned a gas station, and Herminio's dad owned the pizza shop right there. So these kids have been playing since they were about five years old. We've got McCluggage, Ian Tosca, and Baldwin, one, two, and three right now as we take a look out at the beautiful Gulf of Mexico here from the Lido Beach Resort. Chris McCluggage trying to extend that lead that he has. And right now, big battle going on between Eric Legopoulos and Brian Baldwin. Baldwin able to get past Legopoulos. Legopoulos, a hometown boy, restaurant owner, owns the Waterfront 2 restaurant just down in Osprey, where he and his dad manage that. Taking a look again from uh, Chris McCluggage, nothing but clean water. He's still got Ian Tosca behind him on boat number 94, white and black, trimmed in gold. And Eric, the outlaw Legopoulos, Again, picking up some new Ford sponsorship just prior to this event here. We find that a lot more corporate sponsors are coming on board here with P1 Aquacross. Back out to your uh, leaderboard. It's still McCluggage, Ian Tosca, and Baldwin. One, two, and three right now with Legopolis in the four spot. Again, great shot there by the Greenlight TV drone. You can see exactly where the leaders are on the course. That is McCluggage on the blue and yellow ski. Chris McCluggage, your race leader, knows that this is a very important race right here. Even though he has a 34-point lead coming into this, every point matters as we uh, work our way toward the uh, finals. And our world championships this year are going to be held in Key West. We have two more regular racing rounds. Those will be going on in Fort Lauderdale in Isla Mirada a little bit later. And you can go to P1AquaX.com for more info on that. Taking a look at Arminio Ian Tosca, boat number 94, trying to get that sea up onto the podium for the first time this season. But uh, he's got his homework cut out for him as Chris McCluggage is uh, your race leader as we go on board there with Brian Baldwin. And you can see the gap, about a three second gap between second and third place. Baldwin currently in third on the red and white, red, white and blue Yamaha. Being very patriotic this 4th of July. Brian's been racing for many, many years, comes from a closed course racing background, and currently resides in Race City, USA, up in Mooresville, North Carolina. So your race leaders working their way down that front straightaway, and it's still McCluggage, the man with the plan out there. And Chris has been pretty much unstoppable in Aquacross uh, these last four events, again, going all the way back to Lake Worth in 2016. And you can see your race leaders looking to split a lapper, and I believe that's the Geico boat, uh, Jason Russo, about ready to go a lap down. And Arminio Ian Tosca still maintaining that second place, and uh, I'll tell you, that has got to be the biggest surprise so far here this weekend. One of the things that is very notable, uh, Abdullah Alfadel, the Aswar brothers, uh, both not able to make it, as is uh, Guadalupe's uh, Francois Midori. So uh, those four five riders are missing, but uh, we'll see them back in Fort Lauderdale. As again, contending with some back markers. Still got Ian Tosca in second and Brian Baldwin in third and uh, Baldwin with a pole in the water trying to reel in the top two. A great view of Sarasota in the background as these racers try to keep them pumps hooked up as they work their way down the back straightaway. Again, it's still McCluggage, your race leader followed by Ian Tosca and Baldwin as we go on board with Brian Baldwin. Brian sporting the red, white, and blue uh, this weekend. New uh, graphics kit for him. As you see him working his way toward the uh, front section of the track. Brian Baldwin, uh, a class act out there uh, on the track as well as off the track. Brought his son, Caden, who's uh, cheering him on from the beach today. And as we go past, it uh, looks like we have a rider with a mechanical problem along that uh, back section of the track, but it does not affect our leaders. Arminio Ian Tosca, boat number 94, out of Naples, Florida, sponsored by Riva Racing. And Riva Racing really doing a lot for uh, many of these riders out here this weekend. As we look at our battle for seventh place position, that is Jason Russo on the yellow, number 77, and Blaine Spooner on the inside on boat number 220. Sorel Lamone out of France looking for his best finish, currently sitting in the sixth spot right now. Sorel uh, coming off of a major injury last season where he had busted his hip in Daytona, got landed on. Back on board with the, your leader, Chris McCluggage. 
And McCluggage really working that uh, Dean's Team Monster Energy Yamaha. And, uh oh, look out. He's got issues. Chris McCluggage is dead in the water, and it looks like he may have a mechanical issue as your leaders go by. That is uh, Ian Tosca, your new race leader, followed by Baldwin and Jay Edworthy, and currently in that third place position. So, folks, we've got a new leader out there, and that is going to be Erminio Ian Tosca. Ian Tosca has uh, really done a lot of work in the offseason as we go back and uh, take a look at Chris McCluggage. McCluggage uh, beside himself right now. A tough break there, and that's something that you don't see too often. And that is Chris McCluggage coming in on the gaff. So a tough break for McCluggage, but uh, that uh, means that Arminio Ian Tosca has a chance to put that sea dew on top of the box right now. Again, taking a look at the replay there, McCluggage just all of a sudden, boat just dies in the water, and you got to wonder if it wasn't uh, something like a timing chain or something to, to that effect because he is uh, dead in the water and the course marshals again over tending to the goat. So a tough break, uh, and it looks like uh, McCluggage probably will not be getting a win here in Sarasota. Going back out uh, to your battle for uh, fourth place, fourth and fifth place, we've got uh, Eric Legopoulos doing battle. Both of them on the blue Yamahas out there. And it looks like Legopoulos maintaining that fourth place position as he's able to push a little bit wide. Your race leader still Erminio Iantosca, and he's followed by Brian Baldwin and Jay Edworthy. As we go back to Erminio Iantosca and Iantosca, nothing but clean water in front of him. And it would be saying really something, making a statement here in Sarasota for Sidu, as Sidu has not hit the podium yet this season. Again, Erminio riding for Dave Bambus and the crew over at Riva Racing. And Riva really supporting a lot of the racers out here uh, week in and week out on the P1 Aquacross Tour. And speaking of sponsors, we'd like to say a special thanks to Yamaha, Sea-Doo, Kawasaki, HydroTurf, JetLift, JetRenew, JetPilot, Fly Racing, and of course, Riva Racing. But Arminio Iantosca in first place and making his sponsors proud right now. I believe that was uh, the Your Rules Abaco Sunglasses racer, Johnny Smith that uh, Ian Tosca was able to get by. And Johnny Smith with a, a great finish. The final race in St. Pete really coming on strong after transferring from close course to P1 Aquacross. Again, Ian Tosca, your leader out there. He is the man with the plan, the man with the bullseye on his back. Ian Tosca at the south end of the track, now working his way north. Again, Lap traffic gets boat number 41, David Chassier out of France going a lap down. Chassier, uh, one of the top endurance riders over there in Europe. But it's Arminio Ian Tosca, followed by Brian Baldwin, and C477 Jay Edworthy currently sitting in that third place position, followed by Legopolis and Sorel Lamont. Got Baldwin uh, trying to make a move on the outside, boat number 502. Baldwin going to get out the broom, and he's going to sweep hard as these racers split a lapper. Baldwin cutting over and uh, trying to get to the inside of that lapper and does. So, again, now Baldwin with his gun sights set on Erminio Iantosca. And, again, uh, going back to uh, Chris McCluggage, uh, a tough break for uh, the Mac attack as uh, he's sitting there watching the race from the middle of the track right now, waiting on a course marshal. And here come your two race leaders right now. That is Arminio Iantosca and Brian Baldwin. Only about a second and a half between first and second place. And uh-oh, Eric Francis also with an issue out there. Francis came into today second in the points. So your top two points earners right now, McCluggage and Francis, both sitting dead in the water. And that is going to open up the doors for uh, Brian Baldwin and Erminio Iantosca. Now remember, it's 25 points for a victory here at P1 Aquacross. Second place only gets 18 points, so that is a huge gap there. Again, Brian Baldwin could uh, use these points to catch up to uh, Chris McCluggage. Again, McCluggage coming in with a 34-point uh, advantage today. And Arminio looking to take home that 25 points for the race win. We'll see if he can hold on to it as we head into the latter stages here of race number one in Sarasota. Again, you're watching round number three of P1 Aquacross. Your race leader, boat number 94, Arminio Iantosca. 
Ian Tosca's family owns uh, Mama Mia's Pizza, voted Naples' number one pizza for the last several years in a row. And uh, he doesn't really call them a sponsor, but I'll tell you, I believe that they are a sponsor, and they're responsible for uh, him being on tour here for the last 20 years. Ian Tosca, again, came in today as the dark horse. Baldwin, probably uh, one of the favorites out there, still currently in that second-place position. And Brian Baldwin, uh, a great story there, picking up uh, Riva Racing's factory ride this year from Dave Bandis and the crew down there in Pompano Beach. You can see your two race leaders right there. Not too much time between first and second place, only about a second or two. And that's Ian Tosca on the top section of the screen. Brian Baldwin, again, getting tossed around out there as uh, the water's starting to chop up here in the Gulf of Mexico. Brian Baldwin, again, also on a Riva factory racing ride. So you got two Riva pilots running one and two right now. And I bet that puts a big grin on the face of Dave Bamdas, one of the owners of uh, Riva Racing and the team manager. So again, your race finished. The checkered flag comes out and it is going to be Erminio Iantosca. Iantosca putting Sidu on top of the box for the first time in 2017. Coming through in that second place position. Looks like Brian Baldwin, who gives Iantosca a thumbs up. And in third place, it looks like it's going to be Jay Edworthy. Let's take a look. It's Ian Tosca. He'll take home the 25 points. Brian Baldwin in second. Edworthy in third. Sorrell Lamone in fourth. The Clipper in fifth. And Chris Saxon rounds out your top six. So this is the first sea do win in how long? Uh, two years, I believe. And what's your main secret on the sea do uh, you know, just a, we put in a lot of hard work and I put a lot of time in the gym and uh, it's just a combination, you know, good ski and good fitness. And I think that's what uh, helped us win the first moto today. And can you do it again? Um, I hope so. The ski's running really good this weekend. You know, I feel really fit. I'm close to home. So I got a lot of friends and family here and really like to, you know, go out there, be consistent, and do it again. Great start, jumped out front with McCluggage uh, and uh, ended up going to the wrong buoy and then about six laps in, broke a little water line, filled the hull up and overheated the engine so basically took us out of the race. Now is this something easy to fix for the rest of the weekend? Yeah, we already got it fixed, checked it out, everything seems good so we should be ready to win Moto2. Chris, one race down, what happened today out on the water? The thing was running excellent, I took the whole shot and I believe I was leading uh, by lap four for by about 10 seconds maybe. And uh, Erminio was in second, you know, and he was, he was right there. And I was really happy that it was him because, uh, you know, obviously Eric and Brian are the guys that are really up in the points. Um, and then it broke, it just, uh, it just went flat on me. And uh, we came in, come to find out, we uh, broke a timing chain. A great win for Erminio on that sea -Doo. Join us after the break for more racing. no matter what your experience or level of talent. You might not start out competing with the superstars, but you can go to your local dealer and buy yourself a ski, do Aquacross's safety course, and you can start racing in the amateur class. At the back of the field, you can learn at your own pace. Meanwhile, at the front, men and ladies are battling to win and dreaming of racing with the pros, just like these two guys are now. military pilot Anthony Radetich suffered a serious motorcycle accident before he started racing in aquacross. After my injury, I was pretty depressed and I couldn't find anything that was uh, fulfilling that need that I that I wanted, that I had before flying, uh, flying a helicopter, riding motorcycles. And uh, my wife suggested, why don't you try riding a jet ski? And, uh, and I was like, all right, well, I got an appointment with the doctor here in a couple of days. Let's go check it out. Asked him. He said, absolutely not. As soon as we left the doctor's office, let's check on Craigslist if we can find one for all the sale. We found one, rode it, fell in love, and the rest is history. Fitness is everything in Aquacross, and the A train gets some serious seat time. We live next to uh, Lake Eufaula, and uh, my family and I, we're always out on the water. and. Uh, 
when they're out there swimming, I'm out there just throwing throwing buoys in the water and trying to run around them. So I'm, I'm constantly getting some good sea time. Anthony hasn't been racing long, but now he's battling it out with some of the best riders in the world. Uh, I started off when um, when it was pros and amateurs together, and uh, that was pretty tough. And then they separated into amateurs and. Uh, I, I got to uh, tell you, the amateur class is a uh, competitive class as, as, the, uh, as a pro class, but uh, moving up is uh, the skis are different. They're a lot more stronger. Uh, there's a lot more power that you have to keep control of, and uh, you've got to keep it safe at the same time as being pretty aggressive on the course. But uh, the nice part is that most of the pro guys know what you're doing, and they, you can sort of predict what someone's going to do and there isn't wild cards on the like, field, so I do like that aspect. And uh, I like the challenge, Mikey. I really do like the challenge, and the guys in the pro like class, they're all phenomenal guys. They're 100% out there riding, riding for, the, for, the, for the victory. Now, you raced in amateur class for two years. The whole time, did you know you wanted to end up in the pros? Well, the first year I raced, they didn't have the pro class, so everybody was in, the, it was a, a pro-am, I guess. Uh, so the second year when they did the pro class, I just really wasn't thinking about it. I was just concentrating on what I was doing that year. So I won the Florida championship and over the winter I decided why not. And what areas from amateurs to pros have you specifically seen improvement? Just the uh, stamina and, and being able to keep up with the pace of the race. It's just, just so much faster and, and the competition's so much better. You know, so uh, just there, yeah, just being able to hold on to that ski, going faster for 30 minutes. Let's take a look at who has already qualified for the P1 Aquacross World Championships in Key West, Florida. McCluggage, Baldwin, Francis, Aswar, and Ian Tosca have already qualified in the pro class. Our amateur qualifiers so far, uh, Carlito Devalier, Cody Tetro, Kevin Wassum, Enrique Chia, and Gary Shrigley. Let's take a look and see how you can qualify here. Our pro qualifying routes, we have a maximum of 25 qualifying spots. Uh, your world rankings, the top 10 riders in the world will be invited. In the USA, the top 10 riders, or if you were a podium finisher, will qualify. In Europe, top five riders qualify. Our Pro Asia Series, the top two riders will qualify. And from each championship, P1 will award a wild card. Now in the amateur division, We've got our amateur series in Florida, and they'll be qualifying for the 300, 250, and 200 horsepower classes only. We've got our amateur USA Northeast series, our amateur Europe series, and our amateur United Kingdom series, as well as our amateur Asia series. A rider must have competed in a minimum of three 2017 aquacross events or be ranked in the top 50 of the world as of December 2017. see who's going to make it to Key West. Welcome back to stunning Lido Beach. One awesome race so far and still one more to come. Our safety marshals here in Aquacross preparing to take out race number two here in Sarasota. Race number three was actually canceled due to uh, uh, there was some sea mammal holds as we go on board with Chris McCluggage working his way uh, through the channel. Again, taking a look at the course guide here, a two mile track, six turns in this track with the finish being right in front of the Lido Beach Resort. So it looks like the racers are set. We're all set up here in the booth, and it is time to go racing. Time to kick the tires and light the fires. P1 Aquacross USA Pro Tour. This is race number two, round number three this season. Riders are being staged again at the far south side of the track. Wind speed right now, eight miles per hour. The water temperature, 29 degrees Celsius. That's about 85 degrees here in the United States. So here we go. The green flag is up. 
Riders all staged as we get ready to uh, take off. Taking a look through, uh, you can see Chris McCluggage starting from the way on the outside as they invert the order from uh, their finishing position. And here we go, the green flag drops and we are off and away. Headed toward turn number one. You can see Jason Russo on the gold Geico boat as Arminio Iantosca also looking at a good start right here. Arminio with a first place finish in the first moto. Again, uh, the first race had Arminio Iantosca in front with Brian Baldwin in second, Jay Edworthy in third, Sorrell Lamone in fourth, and the Clipper, Mike Klippenstein in fifth. That's the way they stacked up race number one, but that is all past tense right now as we go on board with Brian Baldwin. Baldwin, again, taking a second place, and he is up there in the points. He has surpassed Eric Francis, currently sitting second in the points now after a second-place finish in the first moto. Darrell Lamone, Eric Legopoulos, Victor Nolan, the Nolanator, boat number 585, riding for Pennzoil and Jiffy Lube, trying to get up there in the mix. Looks like he had tucked under Erminio Iantosca as we go back on board with Brian Baldwin. And Baldwin, uh, flanked to his right, I believe, is Chris McCluggage, has to cross over awake, and you can see it is controlled chaos out there. Iantosca in front of Baldwin, and uh-oh, Iantosca got stuck. He's hung up in the buoy. Tough break there for Arminio Iantosca after a race number one win, and that's going to put him toward the back of the pack. Back on board, your race leader, Chris McCluggage. We'll go ahead and credit the Monster Energy Broward Motorsports rider with the whole shot. It's McCluggage, followed by Eric Francis, the Eagle, boat number 911, and Marcus Jorgensen out of Denmark. Those are your top three right now as we go and take a look at Jason Russo. Again, the Chicken Hawk, Jason Russo, from right here in Sarasota, battling it out. McCluggage still your race leader, and he has got about a four-second lead over second place right now, Eric Francis. As we take a look at McCluggage, a beautiful-looking Yamaha right there, and obviously Dean Cherrier did a lot of work on that boat between the first and the second races. And uh, taking a look at the replay right there, that is what your first turn looks like when you're in the pro class in P1 Aquacross, and it is nothing but jet spray here in the Gulf of Mexico. Arminio Iantosca got untangled from that buoy, but he is uh, back at the back of the pack right now, battling for 11th or 12th position as uh, we view it here and taking a look at the replay there. And he just center punched that Aquacross buoy. And let me tell you something, folks, those things are not cheap. And if you run into one, you got to pay for it. That's right, you bought it. So again, going back out to your race leader, Chris McCluggage, and you can take a look at where they are on the course. They are on the north side getting ready to uh, make the turn and come down the front straightaway. Again, big battle there with McCluggage and Francis. Baldwin on the 502 Yamaha. Not up there in the top three yet, but I'll guarantee you he's going to work his way until he is because, again, we talked about it earlier. This guy is a blue-collar racer. Brings his lunch pail to the race, and, man, I'll tell you what, these guys are all scared of him. And you heard uh, in the intro about Chris McCluggage talking about uh, Brian Baldwin, and he has a huge amount of respect for him. We're on board with Anthony Radetich, and we talked uh, a little bit to Anthony a little bit earlier today as well, and it's great to see the uh, SFO Bionic Warrior out here. Uh, Anthony also racing for uh, Riva Racing, as well as uh, Factory Sea-Doo, and it's still McCluggage out in front. Francis uh, trying to keep him in his gun sights, and Marcus Jorgensen looking for his best finish of the 2017 campaign here with the P1 Aquacross Series. On board with Anthony Radetich. And uh, Radetich currently running in about that 10th place position. Chris McCluggage still your race leader and trying to put a little real estate between he and second place right now, Eric Francis, because Francis can be a little pesky to uh, the Mac attack out there, especially in the latter stages of a race. Chris 40-plus uh, and Eric in his prime right now. As we take a look back, and that is uh, your battle for sixth place right now between Jason Russo and Sorel Lamont. As we take a look at the Canadian, Mike Klippenstein. Klippenstein out here on a factory Yamaha, sponsored by Dean's Team Racing. And um, Mike has uh, had his, uh, some problems here in 2017. Uh, he's still trying to stay consistent, but uh, again, he's had a couple of uh, bad finishes, which leave him right now overall, I believe, uh, sixth in the points as we enter this race right here. We'll see if he can't do any better. Chris McCluggage, still your race leader out there. 
And again, Chris coming to us uh, from West Palm Beach, Florida, where he resides now. Had a short stint out in Lake Havasu before, after he moved from Naples, Florida, rather. And the battle still going on here between Russo and Sorel Lamone, the Frenchman. Again, Lamone coming off of an injury he had in Daytona Beach last season, doing very well considering uh, he was pretty much uh, knocked out of service for about 10 months of rehab. McCluggage, your race leader, knows that he needs this uh, race win to keep that points lead. And you can, uh, obviously, he's probably thinking about that. And that is why he is uh, on the gas and trying to leave the rest of the pack in his jet wake. Baldwin competing today atop his Yamaha GP1800, sponsored by Reba Racing. Again, took a second in the first moto and currently sits second in the points as we come to race number two. And Sorel Lamont working on the inside of Baldwin, and you can see Baldwin uh, trying to pressure Lamont. Again, Brian Baldwin running red, white, and blue. It's nothing but stars and bars for that kid right there. And again, trying to get himself atop the podium for the first time here in uh, 2017. Again, McCluggage had been a winner the first two races in Daytona Beach and in St. Petersburg. Brian Baldwin right now involved in a major battle with Sorel Lamone. And you can see these two riders are side by side as they get ready to head into another turn. And Sorel Lamone just slams the door shut on Baldwin and gives him a little pump roost uh, with that as well. So again, uh, Sorel Lamone taking that position away from Brian Baldwin. Back with your leader, Chris McCluggage. And uh, McCluggage looking strong right now. Very strong. And uh, possibly because he only had to race half of that first race. So you know he's not as tired and fatigued as a lot of the other riders right now. Of Chris McCluggage working his way down that back straightaway. As uh, we take a look on, as we go on board with boat number 212, the Clipper, Mike Klippenstein. And the Clipper, again, being a very consistent rider, was one of our points. Oh, and Clipper up and over the bars, and it looks like he lost the back half of his boat. Not quite sure what happened there. Clipper uh, goes off of the boat, and I'm sure that he's checking for uh, something. It looks like he may have actually hit something. And he comes, he comes all the way up over top of the bars and the Clipper, a really strong rider and uh, one of the best endurance riders in the world. And that's something that you just don't see from Mike Klippenstein. So a tough break for the Dean's team rider right there. Wow. What an amazing uh, chain of events that have transpired here in Sarasota in just uh, these first two races. So again, uh, Brian Baldwin involved in this battle with Sorel Lamone. Lamone in on the blue ski, Baldwin on the red, white, and blue ski. As they are uh, side by side coming down that front straightaway. A little chicane right here. And uh, Baldwin trying to keep that position as Sorel Lamone. This is your battle for fifth place right now. Lamone in sixth and Baldwin in fifth. Taking a look from Anthony Redetich right now. And you can see, I believe that is uh, your lead rider. Uh, that is right flank to his left. Redetich uh, finding some smooth water along that back straightaway as he heads south here in the Gulf of Mexico. And here's your battle for uh, fifth place once again. It is Baldwin. This time it looks like he is trying to pick off Jason Russo as they get ready to work their way down the front straightaway. Baldwin nearest to the shoreline. He'll get out the broom and he's going to sweep hard around Russo. Taking a look, now you're seeing what Brian Baldwin sees as he comes into this turn right here, and Baldwin getting to the inside. He'll have position as him and Russo still side by side, battling it out for that fifth place position. Sorel Lamone, a little off the pace now, has slid back to seventh place. So Jason Russo trying to steal this position away from Brian Baldwin, and let's see if the Geico ski can do it. Miss Geico been a, a big factor here. Uh, this weekend with the Sarasota Offshore Grand Prix. This is the 33rd annual edition coming to you from uh, the shores of Lido Beach. And Brian Baldwin maintaining that fifth place position, trying to move up into fourth. And uh, Baldwin really working it out there. And I'll tell you, he's got to be tired after uh, that first run. McCluggage Francis, one and two right now. As we take a look out, We've got uh, just over 11 minutes plus one lap to go here in uh, this final event for uh, P1 Aquacross here in Sarasota for 2017. 
McCluggage, if things stay as they are right now, would actually still be able to uh, to hit the podium with uh, 25 points for a victory here on this uh, last one. He'd be tied with uh, Sorrell Lamone if Lamone stays where he's at with 25, but whoever finishes better in the final race takes the position. And again, we are side by side, Baldwin and Russo. And uh, I'll tell you, I gotta give it to Jason Russo. Russo really not giving up. And uh-oh, looks like he pulled a lanyard. A tough break there for the Chicken Hawk as uh, he was vying for that fifth place position uh, against Brian Baldwin. Again, back on board with our former military helicopter pilot, Anthony Redetich, the A-Train. Good to see the A-Train out here. He's uh, made his debut in 2017. This is his rookie season here with the pros. I'm glad to see he's riding out there with the best of the best in the world. Brian Baldwin is in a uh, solid fifth place position right now. As we take a look at Brian, back out to uh, your race leader, Chris McCluggage. And McCluggage doing everything he can to uh, keep that Monster Energy Broward Motorsports Dean's Team Yamaha up onto the box. And McCluggage, again, uh, having a breakdown in race number one. So uh, now he is uh, trying to come back and get some much needed points here in race number two after that DNF. Taking a look again, that is uh, your battle between Russo and Sorel Lamon. McCluggage is still out in front, but he's got a lot of lap traffic to contend with. And a lot of times that uh, makes the difference whether you're going to win or lose the race. It's how you get through that lap traffic as the white flag comes out. Folks, we are on the last lap. And Chris McCluggage, as he works his way around the Tetrahedon uh, with about a 10 second advantage right now, looking to take home this win right here. His parents watching on from the crowd, Richard and Helen, and uh, his brother Rick helping uh, the Dean's team crew help spin the wrenches. So uh, it's a family effort here with uh, the number 46 boat. So Chris McCluggage not looking uh, fatigued at all out there today. Uh, we noticed in St. Pete he was sitting down a little bit on that third and final race. But again, I think that DNF helped him as uh, you see him standing up and he is in the attack position. Boat number 46. Folks, we know him as the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and there is a reason uh, for that. He is uh, the most winningest racer ever in personal watercraft racing. Uh, back out to uh, Brian Baldwin. Baldwin's still in fifth place, but if things stay where they are, then he will get the overall points title for the weekend. So uh, Brian Baldwin just uh, trying to ride steady Eddie right now as McCluggage gets ready to uh, come down that uh, front straightaway on his final lap. He's going to take a look around. And you can see the arms already up in the air. He is excited, super excited. Boat number 46, the Mac Attack, Chris McCluggage, again, uh, out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, congratulations to him and uh, his wife, Rachel, just having a third child just uh, a little while ago. And McCluggage looks like he's got it in cruise control. One last time down this uh, front straightaway for the Mac Attack. And let's see the, the GoPro mounted on his helmet. Race finish, there we go. The checkered flag drops, and it is going to be Chris McCluggage. McCluggage will take home 25 points for that win, adding to his uh, total of 129 so far. That's going to give him 154 points as we head in to Isla Mirada. It's Chris McCluggage taking the win. Marcus Jorgensen in second. Third place was Eric Francis. Brian Baldwin in fourth. Sorrell Lamone in fifth. And Vincent Thomas rounds out your top six. You can see these riders super excited. Little fist bump there from the slugger Troy Snyder on boat number 110, who is normally a closed course rider. Came out and joined the party here with P1 Aquacross. And uh, him and McCluggage uh, having a couple words down there. And the Mac, again, super excited. Taking a look at the P1 Aquacross USA Championship. Uh, Brian Baldwin going to take the win here in Sarasota. Ian Tosca in second. Sorrell Lamone uh, and Chris McCluggage tied for third. Chris Saxon in fourth as uh, Chris McCluggage going to ride off into the sunset with a victory here. Going over to say hello to Herminio Ian Tosca, who took the race win in the first race, the P1 Aquacross USA Championships. Uh, it's still McCluggage with 154 points. Brian Baldwin with 114. Francis with 110. Herminio Ian Tosca with 91. The Clipper with 66. And those are your top five. How does it feel to win it all? It's the best feeling in the world. You know, it took a little while for the train to get rolling. So, uh, you know, we got ahead of steam and, and we just got to, we got to bear down and, and, and win.
great weekend of racing here at the Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix. Awesome to see Herminio on the podium as a sea doo rider, and Brian Baldwin took home the overall honors. Finally, someone has beat McCluggage. We'll see you next time.